Hello everybody, it's Bourbon Bill, and tonight, a very special rye episode. The newest rye from one of my favorite distilleries. It's old Overholt 10 year cast strength rye. If you're not familiar, old Overholt 10 year cast strength is the newest release here at the tail, tail end of 2023 um, from the Jim Beam Distillery. Okay, they own this brand. It's originally a Pennsylvania rye brand. A couple years ago, they did a limited release in PA and Ohio only of like 114 proof four year. Um, and they, they have some like cheaper bottles, but they've all been like like $26, $30 and less, something like that, okay? This bad boy here though is $99 hairs a bottle and carries a 10 year cash strength straight rye whiskey. What's not to love? Except the fact that this has screwed up my entire top 10 ryes of the year. Cause I had, you know, I tasted through those and that video is coming soon, but I tasted through those and I had a lineup and then I got Jack Daniels twice barreled rye and I got old Overholt 10 year cash strength rye right here at the very end of 2023. So had to get this review up so it would make sense when my top 10 ryes of the year come out. You'd be like, where the hell did this bottle come from? Bourbon Bill never reviewed that. Now I did, so pay the hell attention, all right? You might find this bottle shape uniquely cool and you'd be wrong in that it's not unique. This is actually uh, the old granddad of 114 bottle. So Jim Beam and their smartness reused the bottle they already had. Now, cool things they did. Obviously the label's sweet, right? It's the same fat cork you're used to in the old uh, old granddad of 114, but they put a little embossing words here for the old Overholt 10 year on the top of this one. So they made it special. They reused the bottle, but they still made it special. Now that's cool. Smart business practices. So this bad boy comes in at 121 proof, compute, compute 60.5% alcohol by volume. So pretty high proof. And you might say, well, Bourbon Bill, I don't know that Beam's ever done like a cash strength rye product. You'd be wrong. It's been a while, but how about the 2018 Knob Creek cash strength rye whiskey, nine years old. So here's a nine year old cash strength rye from back in 2018, and now we have a 10 year cash strength rye in 2023. Okay, now the old, now there was two years, they did like a 2016 and a 2018, haven't done it since. So yeah, I don't think there's been any other cash strength ryes from Jim Beam except the very hard and very expensive Booker's rye. So is this like a, a Booker's light rye? Now that one was like 13 years old, like almost in the 130s, I think as far as proof goes, but Hey, look, we don't have that kind of budget here to get that. So you're not going to get a comparison for that. Um, this one came in at 119.6 proof. Compute, compute, 59.8% alcohol by volume. So this bad boy's close in proof and in age. Um, but again, that was from 2018. Not going to find that. Only other thing that Creek really puts out in terms of rye would be uh, the new seven year, which we'll do a review on later in 2024. Um, as well as, you know, the standard store pick ryes that are all 115 proof and all roughly six to seven years old. Although recently I heard that there's now some store picks of these ryes coming out at eight and a half years old. So I'll link above my video of the increasing ages on Knob Creek single barrels. That was really related to the bourbon, but looks like they're doing it to the rye as well. So before we dive in to the tasting notes here, um, this is aged in Escalator Warehouse V or five for those that don't know the Roman numerals. So I assume that's a warehouse that has an escalator in it. Just my guess, haven't been there. The back says a limited release cash strength, a single year, a single place in every single drop. Okay, it feels like a Christian Dior perfume commercial or something. In 2012, we laid down rye in our unique 
Escalator Warehouse 5. A decade later, we selected the best to be blended and bottled at cash strength and unfiltered. This Kentucky style rye is, is the result. Spice, depth, and unmistakable overhaul character. No one really really knows what overhaul character is that's probably still alive. You know, let's just, let's just point that out there. So, doesn't mean a whole lot. What that does tell us if we read between the lines is that there's more barrels of this roughly a decade old. They said they selected the best, but are the even better ones going to be in Booker's Rye or some other Knob Creek cask rye release to come? We don't know. All speculation. Let's get into this bad boy here. Son of a bitch. Oh my god, does that smell good. It's all sweet caramel spice. There's oak on here. There's, there's like a little bit of fruit in the middle. This is a complex rye on the nose. I wouldn't even guess this is a rye from the nose. I mean, there's just like such a sweet caramel spice here. And then like the oak characteristic. And then, you know, there's some fruit in there. It just doesn't necessarily scream rye right off the nose. That beam nuttiness is here, but it's like, it's like caramel drizzled nuts from the fair. I mean, don't those things always smell good? You can smell them from miles away. Let's take a sip. Good Lord, that's delicious. Oh my God, still going. The finish is still going. Exactly what we smelled on the nose comes through in the palate. Big burst of caramel. The nuttiness of the, of the bean profile plays so well here. There's a little bit of fruit in there, and then just a good bit of oak. It, it's so wonderful. It's so well-rounded. It drinks more like a bourbon, but a little bit more unique than just, you know, traditional nine-ish year beam, if you will. Bourbon Bill is rating A+. A+. Where are you getting 10-year cash strength rye for 100 doll hairs? You're not. You're not. Not in 2023, unless you were going to pay almost double for a Parker's Heritage 10-year rye. What are you paying double for when you can get 10-year cash strength rye right here? Now, I haven't sampled Parker's. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's not. I've heard mixed reviews. Haven't heard a bad word about this little guy here, though. Man. All right, so I know what you really came for. With, okay, the rating we got at Bourbon Bill, we got it as a buy. How does it compare to, you know, a few other things we might have laying around? Now, look, I got a lot to compare, and I got to do work tomorrow, you know, so we, we can't be doing everything. But we'll give this a quick comparison for you. One thing I noticed, though, just, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, the old Overholt is darker in color than this. Well, it is darker, and it's only a year older. We'll put this one here in the mini. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so much lighter in color compared to, I don't know if that's going to come through on camera, but it's so much lighter here, the... Knob Creek cast. Let's give that one a nosing. Totally different. Th th this one's got more floral and like herbal notes on the Knob Creek. The traditional Knob Creek oak is there. No nuttiness. Okay. Old Overholt has like a sweet oak and like a sweet nuttiness and a lot of caramel. So that's kind of the difference. We're not, we're not getting anything floral on, on the Old Overholt that's like on this one. And the herbal notes are not on the old old overholt that are on the Knob Creek. Let's take a sip of the Knob Creek. The Knob Creek's very good, but it's lighter in flavor, and it's not as complex. It just kind of carries that herbal spice throughout. A little bit of oak at the front. It's not bringing the depth of flavor. It's not bringing the thick mouth feel. That's the other thing. It's far thinner. It's far thinner. Say, you're like, Bourbon Bill, that's 2018. That's so pre-COVID. You know, I don't got those bottles anymore. Fine. Maybe you have a Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel-proof rye, and you're loving it. And if you're like me in Pennsylvania, where you can still get the old overhaul, and they just release these on the shelf, this is a comparison we must do. Put the JD here. So price point, $68.99 or $69 hairs in PA for the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof versus $100. No age statement here. 
proof on these are generally higher in the low one well in the high 120s to like high 130s no age statement again on these however they're all roughly six to a little over seven this is a store pick from bourbon street uh, wine and spirits in phillipsburg new jersey and this one is 133.2 proof Compute, compute, 66.60% alcohol by volume. How does the JD stack up? Gosh, all banana, barrel char, caramels, more brown sugar. Pound for pound, they're different noses. The old overhold here is all like sweet caramel, oak, and that little bit of fruit in the middle, and the JD is all just barrel char and banana, baby. Let's take a sip of the JD. Lord, that Jack Daniels is delicious. We're talking like two of my favorite distilleries here, just fighting it out. Who will win? Um, the Jack Daniels is all like we just exactly as I said on the nose is the palate. It's all bananas, char, caramels, some brown sugars in there. It's very good, very viscous. It's thick on the mouth. It's a winner. I mean you. Don't pass those up if you see them on the shelf. Oh, man. All right, it's, it's, it's really hard for me. It's like choosing a child. But I'm going to pick the old Overhold again for the simple fact that it's it's a little bit more complex. They're both equally thick on the mouthfeel, and this is very close, very close. Even though I'm a big JD fan and a big banana fan, the old Overhold is bringing this, like, sweet caramel nuts thing going on with the oak and that little bit of fruit in the middle and it, it has a little bit better finish. It's a little bit better. Well, well, it's a little bit more rounded than the Jack Daniels. But it's like by a hair. And you're like, well, Bourbon Bill, Jack Daniels is too young, you know? What else you got? How about a Hughes Bell of Bedford store pick from Drug City in Baltimore, Maryland, coming in at 10 years old. And this is a 95.5 MGP rye. Uh... So we got a 10-year rye versus a 10-year rye. Cash strength versus cash strength. Beam versus MGP. Bella Bedford, though, is funny enough, is a PA label. This is kind of funny. Used to be a PA label. Uh, used to be a PA label. Couldn't have a better matchup than this. Price I paid for this, $100 hairs. Oh, oh wait. $100 hairs. This is the matchup of a century right here. Now, the Bella Bedford, though, is lacking in proof. This one only comes in at 110.8. Compute, compute, 55.4%. Alcohol by volume. Put that in the black here. This is all like dank oak. It's like musty dank oak. You know, like an old, it's an old wood floor, you know. Wow. It's sweet, too. It's sweet, but not as sweet as the old overhaul. But you're getting rye spice here of that 95.5. Like you're just getting a lot of rye spice and a lot of like dank, musty oak on this one, which I do quite enjoy. Let's take a sip. Very good. Very good. You're getting the traditional 95.5 punch of rye spice. It's fruitier, right, as a whole. And the oak comes on the front versus the back end. But I'll say this, it's not as viscous as the old Overholt. And the finish is way shorter, and it's just not as complex. Old Overholt wins again for complexity of flavor, viscosity here. Um, you could argue that it, it again, this is obviously a 95.5 rye. We don't, I don't know what the mash bill is in the Old Overholt, but it's not a 95.5, I'll tell you that. If you gave me the Old Overholt blind, I, don't, I think I'd call it a bourbon, to be honest, but... It is a straight rye whiskey. So I think it's a little bit better than this um, for sure. Um, because the only problem with this is, is, is again, the viscosity and the finish. And it's not quite as complex, but this is a very good bottle and, and still worth a pickup if you're a 95.5 fan. And before I leave you tonight, we got one last comparison just for you. Sagamore Spirit, eight year old rye. Certainly a contender for rye whiskey of the year for Bourbon Bill. As you can see, I've quite enjoyed it. 
If you've watched the channel at all, you know I am a massive Sagamore Spirits fan. This is their batch two of their eight year, which was released in 2023. Proof 111.4 proof. Compute, compute 55.7% alcohol by volume. So obviously lighter in proof than the old Overholt. Uh, eight years old, two years down. We're two years younger than the old Overholt. Uh, this is also MGP. Um, but this is a, a mix of 95.5 and 51% rye. They blend those two barrels together to make these. So I, I'm not sure what the overall percentage is. 70 some percent rye is, is the ending percentage here. On um, this, price of this bad boy was like 79.99. Okay, so it is cheaper than the old overhaul. Then the red here. Oh, sweet heaven. Oh my God, is that a good news? It's all fruit, oak, and caramels, baby. It's way brighter and fruitier is what we get as the predominant note. It's like fruit and oak and some caramel. Uh, so it, it is a brighter, fruitier nose than the old Overholt. Let's give it a taste. Oh my God. What a killer. What a killer bottle. We get fruit, caramels, vanilla, and oak all perfectly integrated. I'm going to give the nod to the Sagamore, but it's slight. It is slight. Sagamore drinks more like a rye because you get the rye spice. But then the fruitiness and the caramels and the oaks are so well integrated around the rye spice that I think it makes the Sagamore 8 year a better rye, if you will. Um, because it, it, it adds the rye spice to those flavors and it's just, it's just perfect. It really is. This is a delicious bottle. Stay tuned to see how high a place is in the top 10 of my rye whiskeys of the year. This old Overholt though, what a dang winner. Okay, this thing is phenomenal. Definitely buy a bottle. I'd say it's probably backup worthy. So if you like what we saw tonight, please like, comment, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button everyone. Thanks, have a good evening.